Yo, what's up guys, Jack here, and today we're taking a look at the Star Wars Battlefront Outer Rim DLC, which will be released tomorrow, the 22nd for Season Pass holders. Now, if you've been following along with my stuff, you've probably already seen parts of, or all of maybe, the live stream which went up on Thursday last week. That was kind of cool. I actually went over to Dice LA in Los Angeles, duh, and did like a, a capture event on one of the days, and then the next day... Three of us stayed over, it was me, Level Cap and Darkness, and I actually had like the world exclusive reveal of the gameplay trailer and also the gameplay, and I got to stream for a couple hours with Dennis Branval, who is one of the lead devs on the game, really cool guy, very hard working, and we kind of sat down, played the game for a couple hours, but it was all kind of unscripted and on the cuff, so there's lots of talking and it's not very concise, so if you haven't watched that stream, I just wanted to make like a short live commentary video now, around 10 minutes, just kind of explaining what's in the DLC, Outer Rim, and also what my thoughts of it are. So, in this pack, we've got four new maps. Two of them are set on Sullust, kind of the factory areas, and two of them are set on Tatooine in Jabba's Palace. Very iconic location, that, and very cool. Now, the maps in this DLC are all kind of based around the new game mode called Extraction. And it's very simple. The Rebels have to go and push this, like, package, whatever it is. There's tarp covering it. You don't know what's underneath it. They have to push it to an extraction point and extract it, and then they win the game. Of course, they're on a time limit, though, and if the Imperials manage to stop them, the Imperials will win the round. I like the new game mode, it's lots of fun, very hectic, and also it's worth noting that all four of these maps are very close quarters style. This is very much a close quarters DLC. Unfortunately, there's no Walker Assault or Supremacy maps in this DLC, which is a shame, and that's going to really put off a lot of people, because I know, really, that's what we've been asking for, although we did get Twilight on Hoth, and we did also get the new Endor map, but of course, I think lots of us would have liked to have seen new Walker Assault and Supremacy maps with 40 players, new environments and opportunities. Unfortunately, you're not going to get that there. What you are going to get here, though, is very close quarters, hectic gameplay, like I just said. Now, alongside this DLC, we get a new hero and a new villain. The new hero is Nyan Num. I used to pronounce it Nyan Num, but apparently Dennis told me that he was talking to, like, Lucas, and they confirmed you actually say it Nyan Num. So that's the right way to say it. Now, Nyan Num is a very defensive sort of hero and it's kind of interesting what, what they've done with these two heroes. Now when they were announced most people were like, okay, like who are these guys? People kind of knew who they were but they're not really these massive iconic characters are they in the same vein that say Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker or Chewbacca or Lando Calrissian is, right? But they kind of make sense for this DLC based on the locations because Nyan Nome is a Celestan and Greedo, he was the, the guy in Jabba's Palace, I suppose. He's a bounty hunter. He's in Tatooine. That's where he was from, I think. He grew up there. And obviously, there's the famous scene in the cantina with Han Solo and Greedo. As I was saying, Nyan Num, he's a very defensive character. And his abilities are as follows. He has proximity mines that he can put down. I think it's up to three at once. So you can kind of create this like defensive area with proximity bombs. And they do a load of damage. Like They're really powerful. He's got a fast pulse rifle, so you all know the green laser pulse rifle star card that charges up and fires a beam. And then it's normally a one-hit kill if you charge it up. Well, Nyan Nome has got one of those, but it's a lot faster and it does a lot more damage as far as I'm aware. It also recharges quite quickly. Now, his third ability, and probably the most interesting, is his turret. And this is a defensive turret that you can put down on the ground. And it actually upgrades the more kills you get and the more damage that you that you do to heroes so if you put a turret down in a very specific location say on a supremacy point or a walker assault point because you can actually play as these new heroes on the walker assault and supremacy game modes it'll just be on the maps that are already available not the new maps unfortunately like i said those game modes aren't available but say you're defending a point you can stick the turret down put some proximity mines down and set up this real nice defensive area where if the turret's getting killed it's going to get upgraded so it's going to fire faster it's going to do more damage and finally the last upgrade level is explosive shots now i actually managed to get to this level once 
during my play session and it just absolutely dominates like it is ridiculously overpowered but it should be noted that if your turret gets destroyed or you put a new turret down that's gonna reset the progress of the upgrade for it so unfortunately you can't just like put put it down in one spot upgrade it then move it around to other spots on the level now the villain Greedo also has a very interesting mechanic he has a confidence meter I suppose at the bottom of the screen so he starts off with a dioxys grenade which is one of the new grenades in the game like a poison grenade it's actually pretty good uh, he also has like a, a, a blaster which does more damage I think it's one of the new ones called the DT12 or something like that and he has a like a wall hack ability so you just press it and then it pulses and you can see people around you he's very quick as well very quick now as you get kills and do damage to heroes his confidence grows and you'll see that at the bottom of the screen so the next level of confidence will improve his abilities and instead of a dioxys grenade it will be an impact grenade and then if you keep getting kills you actually move up to a thermal imploder so you can just toss thermal imploders out left right and center and just do like a load of damage unfortunately though it's a sliding scale so if you stay out of combat and don't get kills it's actually going to slowly reduce and his confidence is going to go down until you're back to the basic level of a dioxys grenade so you've got to stay in the fight and you've got to make sure that you're actually putting yourself out there his other ability is kind of like a lock on kill shot you press it you press the key and anyone that's in range i think it's up to five people it will kind of lock onto them with like this red circle and once it's fully charged it's going to take them all out in one shot really quickly like bam 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 and then they're all down you probably saw it in the trailer and i've got a few clips of it here on like survival mode and when i was playing in multiplayer it's kind of cool, but it does take a long time to charge up. And if you're doing it, you're going to leave yourself very vulnerable. So really, you only want to use this if you've got a flank and you've surprised a load of people and you want to take them out quickly because otherwise you're going to be there charging it up and you're just going to end up taking a load of damage. So watch out for that. But either way, new hero, new villain. They're actually quite interesting and they've done a lot more with them than I expected. Now, there is some changes to the other heroes in this patch as well. Darth Vader has been buffed. He's been made a bit more tanky, which he needed. And also his block has been increased like the duration of the block so Darth Vader is now the badass that we all know and love. Luke has had his run speed slowed down because Dice thought that he was a bit too fast and the others I think have kind of remained the same so we'll see what happens with that. Now there are four new blasters to unlock in this DLC and instead of just buying them with credits you actually have to do hook contracts which is now a separate screen you can load it from the main menu or when you're in game and you see Jabba the Hutt on the side there and there's like a load of assignments and challenges on the left. Now you buy a challenge with credits and that will like bring up a assignment for you so it could be like get 50 kills with a shotgun if you want to unlock the scattergun star card which is one of the new star cards blah 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 you know how it is so all the new stuff in this dlc is going to be unlocked with hook contracts and uh, you need to be at least level 12 before you can access them you don't need to be max level or anything like that but if you want to unlock the new stuff the new star card then you're gonna to have to come into hook contracts buy a contract and complete the assignment so it kind of gives you something a bit more to work towards rather than just i suppose everyone who's been playing the game has probably bought everything now and saved up a load of credits and they would have been able to just buy everything straight away and that's kind of boring but the hook contracts gives people something to work towards and just a bit of purpose and an assignment in game new star cards like i just mentioned there's a massive ion disruptor rifle that's cool there's a scatter gun which is a shotgun that fires two shots really quick and it actually goes through shields so if you see someone pop a personal shield or in a squad shield you can whack out that star card and they'll go down if you hit them with both shots you're going to knock the shield out and knock the player out and whilst we're on shields personal shields and squad shields have had a slight change to them you can no longer throw grenades through them or into them so if a player has a personal shield on and you chuck a thermal detonator or an impact grenade at them it's not going to do any damage to them before it did the same with squad shields you could actually throw grenades into the squad shields and just kill everyone inside you're not going to be able to do that anymore so personal shields have been buffed i suppose because of that projectile weapons will still go through them like the cycle rifle for example that's still going to go through you can also instantly destroy them with ion shot or the ion disruptor that's going to make a meal of them now i'm kind of on the fence about this because i think the 
people have a over reliance on personal shields in the game. For me, if you're not using a personal shield in in Star Wars Battlefront, then you're doing it wrong because it is just a, every time it's a get out of jail free card. And because of this grenade change, you're just going to see more people using it again and again and again. And everyone's got like a hundred charges now, anyways, because they've got all the credits. So I think it's just going to be the new meta really like if you're not using it you're doing it wrong and then maybe for your other star card you could go with something like the scattergun or, or the jetpack for example and it kind of creates this annoying situation where you'll almost kill someone and then they'll just pop the shield and run away and there's nothing you can do and i don't like that personally i think that's bad for the game Yes, I see how it's a good thing for explosive spam because it's going to give people an opportunity to survive that and get away. But I think the duration lasts a bit too long on them and it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Now on top of this, there are some good changes to the hero hunt and hero versus villain game modes. They're both 16 player game modes now, as far as I remember. The biggest change really is hero hunt and they've moved to a percentage based system, which is how it should have been in the first place where there's kind of like a pie chart at the end of the round and the top three players who have got who've done like the top percent of damage to the to the hero will get a chance to be the hero ne next round and you can actually select which hero or villain you want to be now depending on which side you're on which is great because obviously on certain maps some heroes and villains are going to be better than others and what's cool about this is that say for example i do like 50 percent damage to a hero and then i get to be the villain next round let's say and then i'm killed my percentage will actually reset to zero so i'm not going to be allowed to become the hero or villain in the next round unless i do like 100 percent damage so it actually stacks up so in theory everyone during a match should get a chance to play as the hero or villain if every round they're doing a chunk of damage to that player and for heroes versus villains it's now a 16 player game mode and obviously it starts with four heroes versus four villains on the field seeing as we've got two extra in this dlc and there's just a lot more tactics to it now it's it's kind of fun and they've also made it so the honor guards which spawn with princess leia and the shock troopers which spawn with the emperor can only spawn once during the match so if you're lucky enough to get one of those characters, really, you've got to play cautiously and you've got to stick with your heroes and just make sure that they're keeping alive. I can't really think of much else off the top of my head that I wanted to say about this DLC. I think the maps are gorgeous. They look great. There's plenty of detail and all sorts of Easter eggs in here, especially in Jabba's Palace. The new game mode's pretty fun as well. I think the new game mode's definitely better on the Sullust maps, though, because in Jabba's Palace, it's all kind of enclosed and it just gets really explosive spammy especially seeing as the barrage has been buffed the map with the sail barge isn't as bad but the actual jabba's palace map that can just be really really insane because it's close quarters and i actually found on that map it's one of the only maps in the game where i prefer using first person because the third person camera angle kind of restricts you a little bit but if you go first person you can really come around corners with a better idea of what's directly in front of you and quickly flick to targets if you try it out you'll see what i mean but it's the only map that i would actually play in first person rather than third and as i said some people are going to be disappointed that there are no walker assault and supremacy maps here this is something that most players i i'd say it's fair have been asking for and yes we have had those two maps but i think really we need more like we need more walker assault more supremacy game modes walker assault in particular because that is the most popular game mode and it is the one that feels most star warsy the one where people i guess would have more fun it has to be said as well that more free content will be coming out before this dlc and the next dlc so hopefully we do get even more walker assault maps in there at the moment with this dlc there's around 23 maps in the game and to be fair that does sound a lot and if you're doing like a variety playlist that's going to give you a lot of variety but a lot of people just want to play walker assault or they just want to play supremacy they just want to play the bigger game modes for example so hopefully they can just ram a load more in and pad the game full of even more content so there we go guys i hope i didn't waffle on too long there like i said this was a live commentary normally i'd write a script for my videos but i just thought for this dlc why not do it on the fly uh, just from memory and and see how it goes so i hope you enjoyed this one guys very different style i know let me know your thoughts down in the comments below remember the dlc is out tomorrow if you've got the season pass so check it out i think it's out like a week later if you don't have season pass please correct me if i'm wrong but that's normally how it goes down as always give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video guys thank you very much for watching thumbs down if you didn't enjoy the video and i'll see you in the next one